Hi, this is Chloe. Welcome to our little backyard farm. We live on an acre. We have lots of pretty cute little baby animals out here. So today I wanted to walk you through some of the hens, some of the sheep, some of the different animals we have and what they're up to this today on the farm. We've had a lot of little ones hatching lately and I thought I would make a little video and give you a farm tour. So I hope you enjoy this tour and a little tour of some of my favorite chickens and, and go, some sheep babies. and come check it out. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. These little silkies just hatched in the incubator two days ago and I rehomed them with this mama hen who's been very broody and was happy to take them in and they do match her so well. She's teaching them to scratch for food and drink out of the water and they seem a lot more happy and thriving with this mother. So she she seems so thrilled to have some chicks too. Oh my goodness and look how fluffy she is. She's such a pretty girl. I love her. I love these little chickies. Uh, lots of chicks hatching lately. These were all a surprise. They hatched about four weeks ago and we did not even know she was hatching chicks. She was hiding in a cactus right here on our back patio. She was hiding right behind that cactus with a whole bunch of eggs. In fact, she had 13 eggs and 11 of them hatched. And all of a sudden we came home one Sunday afternoon and found little tiny cute chicky faces peeking out at us. And so we moved her over here. Well, we let her free roam for a while. And then um, recently we had a hawk take out a couple of chicks. So now she's in this enclosure with a little bit of wire over the top, although she still gets out. And I still let the chicks out because they have so much fun digging around in the dirt. And they all try to tuck inside this mama still. But she has taught them a lot. She d teaches them, she loves to take them over here and dig around in the dirt. and. Here's our pasture right here. She takes them through the gate, through those holes, out to forage in the grass and dust bath. So they have learned a lot from having a very good mother. Chicks, here's another one, another mama over here. I'll tell you her story in a minute. She actually took somebody else's nest. She took somebody else's nest. Um, I, you know, silkies and frizzles, well, we have a frizzle silky, are a little more passive personalities. So we had a frizzle hatching out a bunch of tiny bantam eggs, and this one, after a couple weeks when we were getting close to hatching, she took her nest from her, basically. What happened is I ended up moving her and the frizzle over here with the, all the chicks, but since I don't have a lot of frizzles, I only have one. I decided to send her back to pasture and let this mama raise all her chicks since she thought they were hers anyway. So she's been doing a fabulous job and my beautiful gorgeous Frizzle is back out at pasture with her best little rooster pal that grew up with her. Fascinating thing about eggs, fertile eggs, when um, a rooster and hen mate, the rooster's uh, DNAs can last inside the hen for a few weeks. So she can keep laying fertile eggs for quite a while and the eggs don't start to develop until she sits on them consistently for three days so she laid 13 eggs before she started sitting on them and then they all hatched on the exact same day so that's a very fascinating thing about chickens and eggs it's so awesome to see um, chicks with the mama one you don't have to spend money on heat lamp you don't have to worry about overheating them or underheating them they just stay with the mama um, another cool thing about it is the mama really makes sure that she shows them what's good to eat. She gets really excited and clucks a whole bunch when she sees a piece of food that they would like and she really encourages them to eat and drink and shows them around. So I'll show you the silky. She's really sweet. She's right here. She had to move inside because um, I tried to put her out there and I need to get a new cage for her. Here she is, she's so sweet. She's been broody for a long time, hoping to hatch out eggs. So I stuck the baby chicks under her, she took them in. She is teaching them how to eat and drink, and it's very nice for them to have a mama. They don't chirp as much, so they're a lot more calm. Um, unfortunately, I first put her in that cage that you were just looking at, 
and put the other ones outside of it, but she decided that hen outside that she wanted back in that cage. Somehow, her and all her chicks got back in that cage, kicked this silky out of the nest, which, like I said, silkies are kind of passive. And so when she kicked her out of her nest, the three babies were still in it, and the other mama killed two of the babies, and one was left hiding um, somehow. So now she has just one, one baby, and I have more hatching in my incubator tomorrow. And not all of these are hatching tomorrow, but half of them are. It's ch tricky trying to make sure this humidity stays high enough though. We do live in a dry climate here. It is a silky and it does match her and it's so cute. And I named this one Enoch. So cute. Little silky chicks are so cute. There's the two little silky girls, babies that got killed by the Easter egg last night. And I was still pretty sad about this. Um, because I just watched them hatch a couple days ago and they're so soft and cute. And I love them so much. These pasture boots because when I'm irrigating and when it's rainy season, it just gets messy out there. So let's go see my new guard geese. These honk. Oh, look, there she is. All running around this one with all her bantam chicks. Okay, let's go see my guard geese. The advantage of guard geese, I have not used them before, but I just started reading about them, that they, when they imprint on a flock, they protect them. I've noticed, there they are, honky and tonky. Um, I've noticed that guard geese are very good um, guards, guardians of the pasture. They let, they scare off a lot of birds that fly overhead and we're hoping they'll keep hawks away as well. I'm not sure how many coyotes they can take on, but a group of them could possibly scare away coyotes. Here's our sheep. And our two babies right here are only uh, two weeks old, just over two weeks old. Look how big they're getting. They are huge already. These are milk sheep babies, and that's a Barbados sheep. These are all sheep. They're not goats. Nobody ever says cute sheep. They always say goats, but these are not goats. This is a Barbados sheep. It has hair instead of wool. And this one's named Mary, and that one's Lammy. Mary had a little lamb. She had two lambs. Now they're full grown. There's one of her lambs right there. She's a big girl now. She's about nine months or 10 months old. And this is Peaches. She's a milk sheep. She is a good mama. Had her babies two weeks ago and has been quite a hungry little gal. There's her babies, Leo and Rio. Leo and Rio are both boys and they're both all white except one has a tiny tan on one ear. And they're very cuddly when they're little. They let you hold them, cuddle them. They're so sweet. So they're, they're gonna nurse for three or four months and then I'm gonna switch with my sister, one of the Mel's so we can have some fresh jeans and ruminant animals. I did plant some nice winter ryegrass here that's coming up nicely. And this will be their feast for the next four or five months. Well, until April or so when the Bermuda grass starts growing again. The chickens and the sheep love this ryegrass, love the winter ryegrass. You can see the chickens here eating the grass. This is a dog kennel. See, I built these two little holes right here for the chickens to go in and out so the sheep can't get to their feed. And then I put this um, can oiled canvas on the edge of two sides where they roost to keep the rain drier, although I had to just put some tar on the roof because it was leaking a bit. Look at these Muscovy ducks. Aren't they beautiful? That's a Muscovy and that's a Muscovy. And... Um, I think their names are Kate and Kaden. Yes, they have gorgeous markings. I thought they looked like little fashion models. Here's some of my favorites, white silky rooster and black sizzle. Here is everyone lining up to lay eggs. Oh, this is Blanca. She was born in the spring. Oh, there's my gorgeous black frizzle. Hello, are you laying eggs again? Isn't she beautiful? She is so beautiful. I love her all black everywhere tones with her curly feathers. She is just gorgeous. And she hangs out all the time with Snowy, the all white silky. They're just a beautiful pairing here. 
And there's a nesting box up here. There's my midnight marin laying in a white sex link. Let's see if anyone, nope, I don't see any duck eggs down there. See, they just hang out outdoors, but at night they sit up there and roost. There's our other gorgeous silky rooster, Elvis. He's the oldest and the wisest. And there's our silky hen with her baby chick that was on, that's only about seven weeks old. It's not actually her chick, but she did hatch it. It's an Americano mix, and it's bigger than her now. But silkies don't get that big. But since it's an only child, it's kind of needy. Look at her. She's like, where's my mommy? Where's my mommy? Where's my mommy? There's your silky mama. And now when the scraps go out, that baby's like, give me the scraps, give me the scraps. And mama's like, ah, you get them for yourself now, girl. She's a pretty little girl, though. He's getting so big. Literally, she's only maybe seven weeks old at the most. She's bigger than her mama, Silky. Of course, she's genetically not hers, but she thinks that's her mama because that's the Silky that hatched her. Oh, well, look, and there's Silver. Silver is the sweetest bantam. She loves to come sit on my shoulder. She is so... This is Snowy. He is the most handsome rooster ever. Look at his gorgeous blue on the side of his face. Hello, Snowy. And he loves to let me pick him up and hold him and eat wheat out of my hand. Of wheat, is that what you came looking for? I love you, Snowy. You are just the sweetest. And so are you. This one's not quite as tame, but she is so pretty. As in, she doesn't love to be held. But love, love her big feathers on her feet. So cute. Here is our kitty who escaped. We try not to let her out because we don't want her to eat chickens. She's a very good hunter though. She eats lots of birds and she did escape this morning and she's wearing a Christmas collar. Lucky girl because she's our Christmas decoration but I do need to catch her and get her back inside since we have a lot of chicks right now and I don't want her to eat any of my chicks. Come here Bella. Come here Bella. Hello, Bella. Hi there, Bella girl. Hi. She's, we call her the mama cat. She's very patient with children and lets kids just snuggle all over her and very rarely reacts to them. And she loves to cuddle. She's a sweet kitty. Best cat we've ever had. Hello, Bella. Hello. Very street smart, too. She can hold her own. So that concludes our farm tour for today. Join us again next time. I'll give you lots more tips about backyard farming and all the benefits. Um, I just want to add really quickly that one of the greatest benefits of having chickens is they love table scraps and they are omnivores just like people. So they do eat cheese and milk and meat and every kind of leftover scrap except for coffee and chocolate and you know potato pills, things that we don't eat. They eat all of our leftover breads and um, pretty much everything that my kids waste. So chickens are amazing for your closing the loop on the food system and bringing a lot of, lots of life into your yard. They are way less work than dogs and cats and they are so much fun for kids um, and for me. They just are very calming, happy, peaceful creatures and they should be legal in every household, in every country, in every city and should be completely legal in every HOA in my opinion as part of an important part of closing the loop on the food system. And I believe that everyone should have the right for chickens, even in an apartment. You can keep a couple chickens inside a cage in your house to eat your food scraps. Much more eco-friendly than a parrot or a dog. They are some of the best pets I've ever had. I love them more than my dogs and cats. Um, they are just the sweetest little creatures, and I hope you get a chance to fall in love with them too. If you have chickens, put it in the comments. I want to hear from you, uh, your experience with raising chickens, and what you loved about raising chickens. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and join us next time. Subscribe for more awesome videos. This is Chloe. Bye!